Hello guys and welcome to my Budget Dick channel. Today with the uh, Ritual Mash something something. Uh, it's basically a ritual deck with a little bit of necros, a little bit of Shino Birds, a little bit of uh, incantations and so on. And that all for the price of basically nothing. First things first, there is barely any uh, side deck cards in here like uh, counter cards whatsoever. Because I feel like this deck in general, um, first game if you want to play it competitively then uh, the first game, it does well enough against all kinds of decks in the end, like it works okay-ish. So I feel like the chance in a ritual deck that you draw into a card that um, is meant to be a side deck card but doesn't work against the specific deck you're playing against because uh, it's quite diverse in the sense of what the competitive meta decks do at the moment and what cards are good against it. So I felt like uh, having a card in your deck that only works against certain decks right uh, in the main deck would be a little bit inappropriate sometimes because you need as many cards in hand to actually do stuff uh, as possible since it's a ritual deck. So uh, I felt like this deck comes all about side decking and can deal well enough with most kind of decks uh, naturally already. So you don't uh, need to main deck uh, side deck options. The only thing that you could main deck is stuff like Caught by the Grave because it can be problematic. Didn't want to uh, bump up the deck count too high. I felt like it's okay if you don't but uh, yeah, otherwise I'll talk about other options that you can run in the deck instead as well. Starting off with Vanity's Ruler or Arc Lord Christia, whichever you have, whichever you want to be getting. Uh, there's a lot of things uh, where that works with, uh, in the end, if your opponent has a counter to one of the cards, then uh, you're probably doomed anyway. So it doesn't really matter how you play, like who of them you play. This guy has more attack. This guy uh, is way better for yourself. So would opt for this card. Both are searchable with Benton though. Um, next up, card that's searchable with Benton, uh, especially with uh, another engine that I have in the deck. I felt like uh, that card was uh, kind of needed because if you uh, play the spellbook engine and which i do uh, in here instead of power of extravagance because that is not budget whatsoever so i felt like kind of substituting with this um you pay with your normal summon to get the amount of draws you would get from extravagance in a sense um problematic with this is that then you couldn't uh, summon vanity's ruler so having a card like artifact lancia that still counters most decks somewhat and i searched as well fenton that that would be still an option to be able to search out if you can't summon Vanity's Ruler anymore because you already normal summoned. Um, for the incantations to uh, Talismandra and to Candle, because those are the ones that you want to be summoning out of your deck. So you don't want to have them in hand because you technically don't want to use their hand effect because you can only use uh, their effects once and like not each of them, but like you can only use one of the effects per turn, which uh, can be problematic if you start with them in the hand. That's why I decided to run three of the Bookstone and three of the Pencil Plume, because late game they're pretty good to recycle stuff that's already in your graveyard. So that's maybe when you want to be summoning them out with the effects of uh, the Incantation Ritual spell or the Incantation uh, Ritual Monster. And at the early stages, you want to use them to summon out the more important ones, Candle and uh, Talismanja, that give you searches. So I felt like that was necessary. Obviously, you can play with the ratios as much as you want to, but in testing, I felt like that really uh, kicked it over the edge and made the deck a lot better. So uh, that was one of those things. Uh, Amana Iwato is a card that obviously works very well with the Shino Baroness Peacock. You can normal summon as well to be protected from hand traps and all those kind of things but in the end i feel like most of you will be summoning this out with peacock only problem is uh, peacock's effect has to resolve for it and uh, you can't resolve peacock's effect if your opponent doesn't control spell trap cards so you can't summon this card so it's not a turn one place hardly which uh, it would be so good uh, if it would be a possible thing but sadly can't turn one turbo um this card out because then you could set up a lock that is quite or would be quite impressive since it's not that easy to get on board. Uh, double Shino Baron Peacock, one Shino Baroness Peacock because you have a different card in your deck that also deals with back row. I like Peacock for the fact if you sight in stuff like Red Reboot and your opponent ex uh, gets to set even another spell trap card that then you can shuffle them, uh, that card back as well. Without Red Reboot though, this card is kind of meh against uh, back row heavy decks because the problem with it is that, uh, well, if your opponent sees that you're uh, activating the effect of this card, they'll probably use something to prevent this. So uh, it's kind of mm, kind of a little bit of a problem. But for that, you have the two Ice Gravity Dragons, 
which are quite neat for that because your opponent can't respond to that and it's return all spell and trap cards your opponent controls through the hand. I think that is pretty strong if your opponent can't respond to it. Plus having this like cheeky effect that your opponent must pay 500 life points to activate card effects is also, uh, wouldn't underestimate that if you can go like face with two of uh, your ritual monsters uh, in your turn. Your opponent is probably quite low on life points at that point. If you couldn't finish him until then, then he, it will be quite hard for him to keep activating cards if he doesn't deal with the gravity dragons effect so i feel like this card did quite well shout outs there to the guy that i think played ys pasadena and who i saw that from and i felt like that was quite a good idea in the deck in general this deck is quite similar to it but try to make it a little bit more budget for people who are uh, maybe got just into the game always like ritual card uh, monsters and so on has a little bit uh, like i obviously tweaked it a little bit and uh, change a little bit uh, in, in a sense but yeah uh, there's not that much these days you can do with rituals you can either play a pure net cross or it's gonna come around to that kind of variant or you're gonna do some vendred lot of the red kind of stuff that's basically what it is because there's not that much i mean there's the demise players obviously but yeah let's not talk about that uh, incantation chalice slime at three because well this card is pretty nice you can discard stuff that you don't need you can uh, get extra searches out of this card and technically you could even use its effect if you summon it not sure that never really came up for me all that much in testing but it's a thing that you could do next up my tiny is uh necros engine which i uh, refer to as the brynak the clausalus and the kaleidoscope because uh, unicorn i would have played anyway because the card is one of the only playmakers that you have going first which yeah you technically this is more of a blind second deck with uh, a little bit more um plays that you have going first still than other go second decks but in the end it's not amazing place and mainly you'll be happier if you go second but what this uh, little combo here does is in a sense if uh, you need for your incantations either a ritual monster or a ritual spell it's really tragic if you only have one in the hand and the incantations you have uh, want you to have the opposite one so being able to have a card in your deck that is searchable by stuff like preparation of rights and so on as well as it can trade itself out for a uh, clausulas and that can trade itself out for a kaleidoscope so in the end you can kind of manipulate which stuff you want to have in your hand then even if you get out stuff like bookstone and pencil plume you can uh, recycle the necros cards back to your hand as well so i felt like in general that was kind of a neat little combo plus going second bryonac is pretty good clausulas can at least do something going first it's not too good it's not too bad um yeah, it's it's okay it's an okay card i didn't include in my extra deck a monster level three for clausulas which you kind of want to do mainly though because if i uh, have the choice between who i want to summon out it's going to be unicorn most of the time because you can't send herald or intis to the graveyard and uh, get like either a pop or a surge so most of the time if i would summon clausulas i'd not summon it with the kaleidoscope but in the end uh, you can obviously fit stuff in the extra deck space is not really tight in that regard one cyber angel benton certain uh, light fairy monster uh, if you use it it's quite neat not that easy to use it though because you can only use it with the shino birds calling uh, so if you summon one of your uh, shino birds because uh, the problem is that the incantation ritual which you can summon everything else with um wants you to only use incantation monsters for the ritual summon so being able to use cyber and Jabinton isn't that easy other than that it can search you out or first turn plays you don't have to play the card but i felt like it gave you more options but more often than not uh you, you didn't get to use it as much because uh using one of your shino barons going first is not necessarily the best play either since you'll probably be disrupted by your opponent somehow getting two monsters on board getting one shino baron on board as well um and so you can still tribute over stuff uh, with the card that you search possibly if you search amenities ruler can be quite hard to actually set up for the spellbook engine i felt like the normal summon doesn't hurt you too much back in the days you played stuff like manju and ritual decks so uh why not include that tiny engine you even have a discard if you draw a spellbook of knowledge for example and you don't have anything to use it with plus bookstone is a spellcaster so there's enough options for you to actually use this uh, in duel and it helps you cycle through your deck gets you uh 
some advantages and can bait stuff like Ash Blossoms or affect Veilers impermanences. Possibly if your opponent really doesn't want you to get uh, a hand advantage, um, that can be quite nice because then you have your other searches that are basically more important because getting a hand advantage with this deck uh, because of the incantations is actually not that hard, especially with cards like Pre-Preparation of Rights. Um, yeah, get filling up your hand is usually pretty easy. Well, getting rid of the cards in your hand is pretty easy as well since that is a ritual-based deck. Uh, extra Foolish Burial at 2 because uh, you don't want to run it at 3 because that would result in being a dead card if you draw 2 of them. So you want to keep that chance as minimal as possible while still having access to like either pop a card or a search uh, one of your ritual spells or monsters. So I felt like 2 is quite a ratio that I've seen most people play so I feel like uh, 3 would be a little bit excessive unless you play like a 50-55 card deck then I guess you could try and go for 3 other than that with the forty cards, uh, 42 cards that I have. Yeah, I, I didn't feel like 3 was necessary. Preparation of Rites, a card that you want to kind of activate later stages so you could recycle a ritual spell, but since one of your ritual spells recycles itself and you have the incantations as well, doesn't really matter if you um, get stuff back from your graveyard, then adding one level 7 or lower ritual monster from your deck to your hand is the key effect. Searching stuff like oh, as Gravity Dragon, for example, which you could bump down to 1, but technically you want to keep bouncing two rows, uh, two turns in a row, because then your opponent can't use any of their traps and most of the time then you've kind of won against stuff like Alter Geist or whatever um, if you can do that two times in a row. Other than that, uh, the card is just in general good to pick up stuff like Brynak, Benton, uh, all those kind of things and obviously uh, the Incantation Chalice Slime if you need other kind of searches. Kaleidoscope already said enough to that card. She knew Bird's Calling sadly doesn't have any good recursion effect the only effect is that you can banish one uh, spirit monster for the materials which can be nice if for example you have uh, both of these in hand uh, and one child slime you can send child slime to the uh, one of the cards with child slime to the graveyard and uh, then use that card that's in the graveyard as material because it's a spirit card can be nice other than that uh, i think it's it's not overly great but it's not underwhelming either it does what it does I could play it at two if you want to since it's searchable but i felt like being able to have uh, ritual spells in your deck as well so if you need some for your incantations that kind of fill up the number and since there's not really a good um, ritual spell that kind of summons every monster besides the incantation one and advanced ritual art which you don't want to play because you don't want to get stuck with normal monsters in your deck uh, i felt like that card at three was all right don't have to though uh, Incantation Inception, most people run at 1, I decided to go for 2, so you just have more ritual spells that you could hard draw. You don't want to draw both of them in your starting hand, but being able to hard draw one of them and then just searching either Kaleidoscope or Calling, or not even any of them if you don't need them, I felt like was kind of neat, because if you don't draw any ritual spell and your opponent disrupts you when you try to search one with your one or search that you have possibly, uh, that could end up quite dramatically so I felt like having the chance to hard draw one of these more often than not uh, still felt good. For the extra deck obviously Intis and Art Guide for stuff like Kaleidoscope or Extra Foolish Burial, <laughs> one Archie and Zombie Skull, whatever level 6 Synchro Fusion card that you want to play for uh, Brynank and uh, the Nightmares, some random uh, Link stuff for the tokens of the Shino Birds and things. The extra deck is not really necessary besides like I don't know 7 to 8 cards depending on if you want to put a special monster in for Clausalas or not. Um, I felt like, yeah, you could technically rank 8s are a thing, but in the end, you don't have to do any of those kind of things. A card that you could play in the deck is uh, Zaborg the Mega Monarch, getting rid of your opponent's extra deck, adding another first turn play, um, being able to search a lot. Technically, go second play as well if you can get into to the graveyard, that can be a game finisher. Uh, whenever I tried it though, you get like effect veilered, you get uh, uh, impermanence and stuff and it just doesn't work out as well as I want it to. Uh, it's not searchable. Uh, I didn't like it as much, but when it pops off, it's uh, definitely a powerhouse. So if you're trying to go for it, uh, go for it. But I felt like that was not uh, helpful enough in the deck or consistent enough to actually play it. Uh, another card, uh, Honorable Benjamin, because this card in a ritual deck is actually pretty good. Some people play it even without the ritual decks because of the targeting protection, but uh, having the targeting protection plus a possibility to search this card with preparation of rights 
and being able to summon it out adds another f go first play to the deck um being able to like negate to summon a special summon of the monster from your opponent is super nice since you can special summon it out with the incantation ritual that is super great but the card sadly isn't budget enough for me to include in this deck profile but I definitely want to mention it if you can uh, afford it then definitely get it uh, armor factor pain imagine imagination drake overlord <laughs> i feel like what you have to know is skip your opponent's main phase one pretty neat i mean it's only once but still can help you out of a pinch if you have to start so your opponent at least can't battle phase kill you already so you kind of get a turn Pro only problem with this card why I don't main deck it is it's like level eight and that can be problematic since you can't search it with preparation of rights and uh, you also can't play it with uh, pre-preparation because I think the field spell, uh, the ritual spell isn't a ritual spell, but a field spell. So I'm not sure how that works with the whole searching. Uh, in the end, uh, it's not strong enough because it doesn't say links on it. If it would have said links on it as well, it would be super overpowered, but I don't know. I feel like the card could have been nice. It's a little bit wasted potential. You could play it though. Lord of the Red is a card that you could consider, but I felt like that didn't work out 100% well as well, well, I hope you enjoyed uh, this deck profile and uh, give it a like, subscribe to my channel if you're into budget decks. I've got a video uh, for people that want to get back into Yu-Gi-Oh! and have no idea what those new cards do, like Link Monsters, Xyz Monsters, Synchro, all those kind of stuff, Pendulum as well. Uh, so we'll take a look at that. Otherwise, I hope you're having a good day.